Okay, we're looking at multi-server queuing. This is where you have more than one person serving, and in this course we'll only go to two people serving. It's a bit uh, more complex than the simple one person serving and people lining up. And if you can picture uh, Big W at Westfield Marion, where you all big line up in a big long line, and the next person uh, free will call you, and you just wander down and you get served. So that's that's what we mean. Multi-servers with one with one big long line up, and the next person goes to the next available. Um, customer, I suppose, the next available uh, person to be served. So once again we've got a whole stack of assumptions. Um, as soon as one person's finished being served, the next person's there straight away. There's no breakdowns. The person that's being at, uh, is being served is not counted in, in the queue. Um, and that's the kind of things that we'd like to use. In multi-server queues, more than one server, same deal. As soon as one person finishes, the next person um, is there. The arrival time is when the customer lines up to be served. The service time is how long it takes to be served. Start finish is the time that start to be served and finish to be served. Exactly the same as a single server queue. Customer waiting time is the start service taking away the arrival time and we have that in minutes. And server idle time is the time that the server is doing nothing. And as a for a business you want to actually minimize that a bit so that it becomes more efficient. Queue length is the number of people waiting to be served and the person at the start of the service period. So we'll kind of go through that as we see one. So businesses need to be aware of this customer satisfaction and waiting for a, in a queue for too long will make customers think of going somewhere else. It also is dependent on what they are waiting for. People will line up longer for say grand final tickets than they will for a packet of chips. So one way to make this more efficient is to have more than one server, but you need to be balanced with making sure that your servers are used um, appropriately, otherwise you're paying money and not getting anything out of them. So let's have a look at a couple of examples and see what happens. A shop opens at 9 and we are have um, one person ready to be served. A customer arrives every 3 minutes, so our arrival time is 3 minutes and takes 4 minutes to be served. There are two servers and we're looking at the first 10 customers. So down here on our arrival time, they get there at 9 and every 3 minutes another person. So 903, 906, 909, all the way down to 927. So I'm just adding 3 minutes in this column here. In my server line, I've got server 1 then server 2, and then server 1 and server 2. So they just keep on rotating over and over again. Sometimes, depending on the way the question is written, you may not want to write all the information here because what will happen is that you'll end up with... Um, if, if a server has to go twice in a row, you can't actually do it. Service time is four minutes. It's the same all the way down here, so I've pulled that in. Now, at 9 o'clock, the first person arrives and then gets served to 9.04. Customer waiting time is zero. Server idle time is zero. Queue length is zero. So that is done by server number one. So let's follow server number one through. They finish at 9.04, and then they pick up the next person that comes in at 9.06. So see how they're going in this kind of area here? And then they go through to there, and then they'll pick up that one there. And they'll pick up that one there. And then they pick up this one here. So it goes 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So you see how that works. So we've got, comes in at 9, goes to 9.04. Server 2 picks up this person here that turns up at 9.03. They start at 9.03 and go through to 9.07. Then they're still serving. This person jumps in, takes the next one, 9.06 to 9.10. Server number 2 takes 9.09 to 9.13. Server number one then grabs the person at 9.12. So they arrive at 9.12, they grab them at 12, go to 9.16. Notice that server number two can't take this person because they are still serving. At 9.13, they're still serving, and the other guy's ready to roll at 9.12. And it keeps on rolling down like that. You can see how they alternate between one and the other. Let's have a look at customer waiting time. That's the time they arrive, take away the time they get served, and you'll see that it's zero every single time. Because as soon as they arrive, look at person number nine, they arrive at 9.24 and they get served at 9.24. Pretty cool. Server idle time um, is the time that the server sits around doing nothing. So server number one here, they start serving at 9, so there's no idle time at all. Server number two starts serving at 3, 9.03, so therefore they've been waiting around for three minutes. Okay. Server number two finish, server number one sorry finishes at 9.04 and their next gig is at 9.06. So 
in between there there's a two minute gap two minutes then if you check with this one 907 for server number two they then their next gig then is at 909 so once again two minutes so it goes two minutes all the way down here so there's a two minute waiting time for all the servers queue length there's no queue at all because every time someone rolls up they get served so have a look at this number six person they arrive at 915 and they finish at 915 so there is a non waiting time at all so these serve it's very 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 good for the customer so now we want to look at the um, thing called the server idle time okay or SIT and that is the time served divided by the, the total time that's there so we have we count up the number of server idle time if we add that up that comes to 19 so they've been they've had 19 minutes worth of idle time in the 31 minutes that the thing has been running okay so we're going from 9 to 931 so it's actually quite a lot of time if we times it by 100 to get it into a percentage we'll end up with 61 percent or thereabouts now there are two servers so you got to divide that by two okay so it's around about 30.6 so 30.6 percent of the time these the servers are idle so that's the percentage server idle time 30.6 which is very high because that means a third of their time they're doing nothing the average waiting time is zero because look custom waiting time here all the way down here is zero so they've got no waiting time at all so that seems to be not a bad kind of thing here it's good for the customer not very good for the business so let's have a look when we start looking at it the problem with this simplistic setup is the customer waiting time is reduced to zero but the server idle time has gone to 30 percent business needs to balance the waiting time and server idle time you don't want to have your people waiting too long but also you don't want to be paying your workers not for doing anything so let's have a look at another example and this is going to be a bit more complex because this is probably what's going to happen in real life a short store opens at nine o'clock with four people waiting the shop has two servers who serve all the time arrive people arrive every two minutes and the service time is five design a table and a graph to show the situation do this for a 20 minute period and see what happens what's the average average customer waiting time and is this appropriate so we need to look at that so let's have a look at how this runs in a table now you need to be filling this out by hand I've done these on a spreadsheet um, and they do take time and I'd advise you to use pencil so let's have a look I've done two different colors to make it a little bit easier for us we've got the customers arriving at 9 902 904 906 908 910 all the way down to 920 okay so seeing they're going up in two minutes my, my servers I've just got one two one two one two just alternating all the way down and the service time is a flat five minutes for everyone okay so let's follow let's go through with server the start at the beginning server number one picks someone up at nine o'clock and they go through 905 beautiful server number the next person comes in at 902 server number two picks them at 902 goes to 907 okay as soon as this person here as soon as number one finishes they come over and grab this next customer which is customer number three so they start serving at 905 and go through to 910 these guys finish at 907 server number two finishes at 907 so they go from there and come straight across here and pick up the 907 and go to 912 and then the process is repeated so they finish at 910 they start here at 910 and pick up this person it goes to 915 these finish at 912 they start at 912 go through to 917 so we just keep on working all the way down now what you're probably seeing here already is that there is no lag time between when they finish say here at 910 and start their next customer at 910 so the, the the server idle time is zero all the way down so we can just do a double check they finish at 905 start at 905 910 start at 910 915 915 920 920 925 925 so they're working all the time so if you have a look down the server idle time is zero so the total of that is zero let's have a look at the customer waiting time this these first two are zero because they start at nine o'clock and they get served at nine o'clock okay 902 served at 902 so it's all good 904 905 so there's a minute 906 gets served at 907 there's a minute notice how they now starts blowing out 908 
they get served at 910, so it's a 2 minute. 910 to 912, 2 minute. And you guessed it, 912, 915, 3 minutes. So it keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the way down until it gets to 5. Okay, so that's getting that's that's increasing as we go because we can see that the customers are turning up at a two minute interval and it takes five minutes to be served. So even with two servers, they're going to lose out by a minute each time they go through that full cycle. Now let's have a look at queue length because queue length is where people get a bit upset because sometimes it doesn't quite um, work out. So I'll just rub out some of this stuff here so we can see what we do. Once again, it's really important to keep systematic with what you're doing because otherwise you'll, you'll kind of lose track of what's going on and it gets quite upsetting. So let's have a look at um, how it works with, this, with, the, um, with the queue length. We're looking at this time here and comparing it to this time here. So 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, there's no one in the queue, there's no one in front of them. At 9.02, that's 9.02, once again, no one in front of them. 9.04, 9.05, they get, they get served a minute later, so there is one person in the queue. 9.06, that is bigger than 9.06, that is less than 9.06, so there is one person in the queue. So we come across and look there, one person in the queue. 9.08, 9.10 is bigger than 9.08, so that's one person. 9.07 is less than 9.08, so therefore one person in the queue. 9.10, we come across. 912 means it's bigger, so that's one person in the queue. That's equal to it. They're being served at 910, so therefore there's only one person in the queue. 912, same thing. 915 is bigger than 912. 912 is equal to 912 here, so that means that there's one person in the queue. 914, come across. 917 is bigger than 914. 915 is bigger than 914. 912 is less, so there is one person here, two people in the queue. 916, there's one person there, that's bigger than 916. Two people there, that's bigger than 916. That's less than 916, so there's only two there. Come across to the next one, 918. 922, one, two, there are two people in the queue. 920, one, two, that one's being served, that's two. If we kept on going down there, you'd probably find that they'd end up having um, uh, the going up to three people in the queue because this is a non-efficient queue as you can see with the customer waiting time getting bigger and then the queue length getting bigger okay so that's that's how you do those things it's really systematic go slowly go systematically follow the process I've just done in doing it and you'll find that you'll, you'll get close to the answers the tricky bit is the queue length but just make sure that you follow through the way you can do that. Once again, we can add up these totals, and then out of that, we can look at average queue length, customer waiting time, and server idle time to see how good that queue is. So let's have a look what happens when we do that. We end up with the average waiting time is 25 out of 20 minutes. So the time here is 20 minutes. Oops. Time here is 20 minutes long. So 25 out of the 20... 25, if we add up the waiting time, sorry, we end up with 25 here. It's been going for 25 minutes, so it's 2.27 minutes. The average queue length is 13, because if we add up that, we get 13. And there are 11 people being served, if you count them up. So it's 1.8 people in the queue at any at one time, which is, you kind of think, well, that's not too bad, but it starts getting bigger here, which means that it's going to get bigger and bigger. The average service time is the number uh, equals the number of servers divided by the average service time, which is 5.5 minutes to be served divided by 2 is 2.5 minutes to be served. Okay, so if you look at that 2.5 minutes to be served, and they arrive every two minutes, then that is why this queue gets out of hand. So this is not really a good model, okay? Because it, what happens is that um, as customers keep on coming along, uh, the queue gets bigger and eventually the queue will overrun everything that's going on. So the queue will get longer. So the, the business will need to look at how we do this because otherwise um, it's, it's a bit of a pickle in terms of um, what's actually being found and how these people are being served. So it's not very efficient at all.